Bip. All right, now we're gonna switch over and we're gonna look at the closer look. The closer look. Let's take a closer look at the closer look, you know? The time has come for the next year, for the next season of year 10. Not the next year of season 10. That would be backwards. The season of souls. Uh, heavier changes than usual, right? Because it's a new season. Our vision. Even gods can't be slain. They can be banished to the underworld, stripped of their power, or forced to stare at a gray screen for 10 to 50 seconds. Surtur's army of monsters has made progress, even with Shelly joining the opposition. Okay, this is like RP stuff. Conquest map plunges into the underworld. All game modes will experience soul surges around the god of death. Conquest is receiving two new strategic objectives. The Stygian Beacon and the Unleashed Titans. For the first time in my history, the Titans of Order and Chaos will finally meet face-to-face -face in a brutal showdown for superiority. Technically not the first time. <clears throat> um, additionally, there'll be game-wide stat decreases across all Tier 3 items. Power items will be nerfed more than protection items as we continue to work towards adjusting the balance between tanks and DPS. This season update is intended to heavily favor tanks in addition to their stat advantage they'll also be receiving a variety of utility buffs to the passive effects of their items and there will be three new sets of tank focused glyphs about time that we got some more glyphs in the game glyphs was a really cool feature that like i added to the game and then just like stopped being worked on i feel like so that's nice um to be fair, like, I feel like tanks right now are pretty boring. So hopefully it'll make tanks a little bit more fun. Uh, Season of Souls launches. That'll be June. Let's say the exact date there. I should all look. Uh, June 13th is when it'll launch. Yeah, yeah. The new stuff. The new stuff. Yep, yep. Karen will be the next god in July. Okay, Soul Surges are a new game-wide mechanic, meaning they'll appear on every map in Smite. The feature creates new objectives that can spawn at any location on the map, creating a vast amount of unique possibilities. When a god dies, a Soul Surge will spawn at the point of their demise. There are circular areas of effect that grant movement speed, to all gods in the area, and a buff to damage dealt to gods with low health. While a soul surge is active, spirit minions will spawn from the center, attacking nearby gods, providing XP and gold when slain. Any additional god deaths anywhere on the map cause the area to expand in size and extend in duration. After the time expires, there's a global soul surge cooldown for all players. Okay. Um, seemingly makes PvP more important because PvP now gives you PvE. Um, also seems to favor snowball -y type characters like a Thanatos to get a kill that spawns a thing in the area that gives you the bonus damage on the other characters that give you the thing, almost like a blood forgey thanatos -y type favored environment. Um, it's definitely, depending on how it works, pretty brutal to die and then give the enemy more XP. I uh, gotta be super careful with that in terms of a snowball potential. Gameplay features conquest. Ooh, spooky. Ooh, so scary. This all new underworld art set features a variety of deadly new assets. Season of Souls Conquest is all about big objectives. Wanted to introduce more ways to get a meaningful advantage over the enemy team through the clearly visible and contestable encounter, counter, counter, counters. <clears throat> Stygian Beacon. Capture point style objective. Located just outside the middle of mid lane. Stand in the area in greater number than your opponents to capture it. 
The beacon will always activate exactly three times each match of conquest. The team that successfully captures the beacon will gain a permanent stacking buff that increases their damage dealt to towers, phoenixes, and the titan, as well as team-wide gold and XP. After the third and final beacon, the titans will break from the binds of Tartarus and become unleashed. The lane with the most total structure health will be highlighted, and after a slight delay, the titans will march down it. Titans will meet in the middle of that lane and face off with their melee attacks, as well as two new abilities. Depleting an unleashed titan's health bar to repel it, teleports it back to base, then continue to push to victory with your surviving titan. Unleashed titans are symmetrical and use a fresh set of HP bars separate from the health they have while bound in base. Slay a titan in the base before or after this encounter to end the match and win the game. So, like, standard. These two objectives create a big opportunity for team fights. Both of these objectives favor the team who properly position the right players in the areas, but knowing exactly what will be necessary is harder than it seems. If a team overcommits to the beacon, they might lead themselves open to losing a gold fury or fire giant. Which are more valuable? Using these new objectives in this way and splitting your team effectively will be the key to victory. Additionally, Conquest is getting some additional balance and pathing changes to solve some problems we have seen across the season of souls. Shutdown bonuses and Cyclops chests will decrease in value. Gold buff, silver buff, and both mid harpies will increase in value. Fire giant respawn will be increased to five minutes and the buff duration to four minutes. Phoenixes will be easier to kill. Access to the nearest buff camp from lanes will be quicker, and paths around Harpy Cyclops camps have been opened up more for faster travel times. Mid lane is significantly wider and shifted more towards solo lane, as the beacon will now spawn on the duo lane side of mid. Okay. Before I go further into this, I want to try to digest some of what's happening more objectives hypothetically equal more equals more team fights less mindless pve more pvp in my opinion is good because what makes smite fun is it afk farming the back harpy for the 10th time or is it pvping around an objective and then getting an objective pvp is what makes might fun pvp pve is just the necessary evil so the idea behind more objectives and more like strategy around the objectives i like the idea but there is always the concern, and there's no way to know this until you play, about if there's more objectives, does that just mean that there's just more snowball? How strong is the beacon compared to the gold theory and the pyro? Does it become... You have to fight over the beacon, and if you lose the fight, you lose the game because of the whole titan mechanic. Who knows? We don't know when those beacons spawn, after the third one is when the Titans come out. Is that the 5, 10 at 15 marker? Is that the 10 minute, 20 minute, 30 minute marker? When those come out is very important to know how this is going to affect the game. Um, so there's a lot of <coughs> missing knowledge here in order to like fully judge how that's all going to work. So my assessment of the Beacon and the Titans is I like trying to get people grouped up more. I like trying to get more team fights and more PvP because it's better from a player ex perspective and a viewing perspective. In, P in SPL, if people have to group up more and fight more, it's a better viewing experience. More people want to watch. For streamers, if there's more fighting, there's more grouping, there's more stuff, people want to watch more, right? Um, so the idea is solid. 
But you've always got to be, you just always got to be careful because if it becomes the first team to win the the beacon, you know, all of a sudden snowballs and then gets the pyro and then gets the gold fury and then has an 8k lead in 10 minutes, that's bad. So how do you balance that out um, on the like kind of supply side of things will be interesting. Uh, and hopefully it does get uh, get worked out. Permanent buffs are always scary. Getting the beacon and you're going to do more Phoenix damage, more tower damage, more Titan damage is very scary for Snowball, especially if you're combining it with making Phoenix is weaker. More damage to Phoenix is plus Phoenix is a weaker um, can be a very dangerous combo, uh, even for like split pushing. You know, how much does it affect like split pushing and being able to like go in and quickly kill a respawn Phoenix? Who knows? Um, so my official decree on that is I like the ideas. Execution is going to be spooky. Uh, it is the season of souls and they've they've scared me. They've scared me. Uh, next up, gameplay feature balance. This season has some sweeping balance adjustments. Nearly every tier three item in the game is going to be getting changed, and roughly 35 underperforming, underperforming gods are getting utility-focused buffs. Interesting. I would have rather this been the other way around, but that's okay. Earlier today, somebody asked, would you rather buff all of the bad gods or nerf all of the really good gods? I always lean into the nerf the really good gods. Because right now there's like 12 gods that are just objectively better than everybody else. There's like two gods per role, basically, that are just like way better than every other god in those roles. Um, so I would have rather seen like Thor nerf, Hachi Man nerf, Marty nerf. Um, but that's not to say that they can't nerf like the top 10 gods and do this. You know, a two for one deal at Costco would be cool. So if they end up nerfing like the top 10 gods and buffing the bottom 35, I think that could be good on both ends um <clears throat> item stat efficiency nerf pass over the past years through many buffs and nerfs there tends to be more buffs than nerfs so the items as a whole gain more stats additionally new items are added to overcome especially high barriers to get players to break habits to try them so item as a whole gain more stats basically just saying that there's like a, a power creep over the years which is just how video games work it's always a power creep we're taking this opportunity this season to do a game-wide reset all tier three items will have their physical magical power base stats reduced by 30 percent that's good decrease the health physical magical protection base stats by 15 percent so clearly favoring buffing protection item ratio to physical power uh they talked about how they wanted to like buff tanks as a whole so that's a 15 percent buff to tanks as a whole Overperforming items may have additional nerfs on top of these underperforming items may receive additional buffs on top of these and starter item upgrades and a few relevant map effects were also adjusted. Uh, on paper, that sounds good. I think most players would agree that there is simply too much damage in Smite right now. Uh, we've talked about it a thousand times. If you get stunned for one second in Smite right now, you're dead every time. There's a 100% chance if you get stunned, you're dead. So if you get hit by one CC ability, you simply die unless you have your Bezagus up, uh, which isn't particularly an enticing meta. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of counterplay opportunity. Um, some of the results we've seen from this, it's harder to cap. How your god powers up from start to finish of a match will feel different. Probably a lot harder to reach stat caps, uh, which is good, because right now we played an Ares game earlier today and we reached uh, protection stat cap in three items three items we were at the protection cap which doesn't really make any sense uh decreased burst dps versus dps god combat we'll see increased late game time to kill or opportunities to outplay i like it and tank your tanks dps and tank god combat we'll see increased late game time to kill uh but you have to keep in mind that like the tanks will be tankier but if they're reducing all the power across the board like we just got you got to be careful with um the one thing you do have to be careful of when you make these big percent changes is you have to be wary of gods that have really big base numbers. So if you're going to be reducing this across the board, that's going to affect scaling gods a lot more than it affects base gods, right? So if you're a character that has 100% 
scaling power on ability, but the baseline damage is kind of low. This is going to make you a worse god than it does to a character that has better baseline numbers and worse scaling. So you got to just keep that in mind in terms of balance. Um, because that will have a big effect on the game. Um, few examples. Divine Ruin will go from 100 power to 70 power. Deathbringer goes from 40 physical power to 30 physical power. Spirit Robe would go from 40 of each protections to 35 of each protections. I mean, I guess that is the math on that, but I would have... Like, that right there seems strong. Divine Ruin from 100 to 70, but Spirit Robe from 40 to 35 feels like Spirit Robe wins that trade right there really hard. Deathbringer only having 30 power is kind of wild. Um, the community feedback and data tour tank balance has been consistent over the past few updates, so we aim to build some tank favoritism directly into this. What's up, K? Wow, such wow. Um... Like I said, this as a philosophy, as a philosophy, I don't think there's anything wrong with it because I do think that Smite has power creeped way too hard into one-shotting. So I think that the idea, I think that their hearts are in the right place and we're just going to have to see, hopefully, hopefully they recognized that doing this change means that gods with big base numbers, AKA warriors that have four damaging abilities, I'm particularly concerned about gods like Wukong, who have got four different ways to do damage and can just abuse baseline damage plus like one blue stone and then go full tank. Um, but hopefully they recognize that doing this change means that there needs to be a preemptive nerf to baseline numbers of those certain characters. Um, so hopefully a part of this patch will be baseline nerfs to certain, uh, probably mostly warriors, I would say, that will be able to abuse this. There might be a few assassins as well that might be able to go like a tanky build and also abuse it. Um, but hopefully that was thought about and looked at. Uh, new glyphs. Relic dagger is getting, oh, that's fun. Relic dagger is getting a glyph. That's cool. Um, Bewitched Dagger, I bet you can guess this one. An Eldritch Dagger. Bewitched Dagger. Bewitch. Witch. Witchblade! Witchblade! Hey! They brought back Witchblade! I don't know which one in particular, but they did it. Wow. Good. There you go. Shout out to Witchblade being back. That, I, that item slot has been missing in the game, by the way. There was a notable increase in the amount of auto-attack abusers with the removal of Witchblade. Runeforged Hammer is getting two glyphs. Flameforged and Rune Breaking, interesting. And Pridvin. I like all three of these items getting glyph because none of these three items are meta. And so adding a glyph to a sub-performing item could make them better and more meta uh and i like that instead of like instead of adding it to items that are already getting picked every game like if you gave a friggin glyph to blood forge then all it does is solidify blood forge on every character in every game um so i like that being on kind of those like tertiary slightly underperforming items that's a good uh decision on the glyphs and to be fair that's how glyphs were originally kind of used was to like buff up some underperforming items. So I like that. Um, we won't spoil much about these yet, but they all bring impactful new utility effects that solo and support players should be quite interested in. Cool. Glorious Pridva does have a wonderful ring to it. A wonderful ring. <clears throat> additional item balance. There are some additional balance goals hidden within this massive sea of nerf. Underperforming tank item buffs will not counter the 15% stat nerfs, presumably items like Runeforged Hammer and Pridvin, and even Relic Dagger, right? That's, I mean, those are literally just buffing those underperforming items. Um, underperforming DPS Glyph item buffs, uh, presumably like 
the other glyph on Executioner, which nobody even knows the name of because you buy the other guy. Mage ADC item buffs, that one makes sense. Uh, mage ADCs are basically entirely reliant on the ring tree, and if the ring tree sucks, then all of the mage ADCs suck. So it's kind of like the, the tree has to be good because it's their only items to buy. Support aura item nerf slash shift. The auras were more nerfed more instead of base stats for their 15% reduction. Okay. Uh, this will be an interesting one because on one hand, like, supports are aura characters. But on the other hand, it's not really dynamic gameplay for the entire support class. If your job is to buy all the protection auras and then stand next to me. It's not very fun. Like, buy Prophetic, get it stacked, buy Thebes, buy your stupid Watcher's Gift, and then just stand near me is not very intriguing gameplay. Uh, so I do like the idea of supports being able to build other things that are not Auras. Movement speed nerfs on various sources. Sweet baby Jesus. That's the best part of this patch. Everything else up to this point is basically up in the air. Could be good, could be bad, depends on how it's implemented, depends on the exact numbers, right? Movement speed nerfs is an is always a win for Smite. Like, movement speed is just the best ad in the game because in a game where you have to aim all of your abilities, dodging an ability is the best thing you can do. You don't need protections if you just never get hit. Uh, so, hopefully... Hopefully that's a blanket sweep statement. Like, I would like to see... Movement speed nerfed on abilities and passives like Poseidon. I like to see it nerfed on Doom Orb and Golden Blade. I just, I I don't know if any item or anything in the game should be giving, no item in the game should be giving more than like 5% movement speed tops. Honestly. Bloodforge gives like what? Movement speed twice or something? It, it's ridiculous. Like it ends up being a Mercury nerf, but to be honest, you can, Nerf all of the movement speed numbers and then buff Merc passive and you can just even it out. So, uh, but also screw Merc. He doesn't need a buff right now. F him. Starter item balance. That's always good. It usually just means shifting around what starter items are meta, uh, which is good. Like if you're not going to put in new starter items and take out starter items, shift around their stats. And all of a sudden everybody's buying vamp shroud in mid instead of conduit gem. And that's fun because it's new penetration. Cap and amounts reverts. That did not last long. They're going to be buffing tanks, which means you have to bring the pen cap back. <laughs> that is funny. If tanks are going to be tankier, then we need more pen to deal with the tankier tanks. So that did not last very long. Um, when we introduce a significant amount of tank strength to smite, it's important to always have options to counter it. For that reason, we've decided to revert the percent pen changes to their 40%, 20%, and 10% values in 10.6. That is really funny. Previous nerf to these values was indeed effective at the time. We saw tanks living longer and winning more, but the community was mixed on the concept, and with these new changes, we found it especially important to revert. To be fair, not incorrect. Definitely the, a good time to revert. We'll certainly be looking closely at this dynamic through the following updates and make more adjustments as needed. This season is shaving up to be the biggest one yet, arguably larger than 10.1 itself. Gameplay feature list. Every single tier three item with any power protection or HP is getting nerfed. Six new glyphs across three items. Underworld conquest. Soul surges, Stygian beacon, and unleashed titans. Approximately 35 gods receiving buffs. Six gods. Ooh. Six gods receiving nerfs. That, in my opinion, is not enough nerfs. Um, Because now it's like, what? You nerf Vamana, Thor, Afro, Hal, Hachi, Marty? Maybe? 
Um, I would have liked to see that closer to the 10 to 12 range um, to take the edge off of those upper echelon of characters. Um, but at the end of the day, there's going to be so many changes with all these things that like, you know, it could significantly shift the dynamic of who was good and who was bad. Like I said, baseline numbers are going to become that much more important. Um, okay. So overall thoughts, overall thoughts. One, the game is without a doubt going to be significantly different. And when the current patch is crap, that's good. Um, when we went from the season of monsters to hope there was significant changes. And that's always scary because season of monsters was a really fun season. There was significant changes. Unfortunately, there were significantly negative changes. We ended up in the season of hope, which was the season of poo poo, but significant changes when the overall community strongly disliked the, the current state of the game probably is going to move, move it in a better direction, right? Like when you're here and you've got this much wiggle room up top and this much wiggle room down below, chances are it's going to move it low. When you're down here and you only got this much wiggle room down below, but this much wiggle room up top, it's probably going to move it back up. Um, so I like the big swing. I like big swings in general because I do think that every three months significantly changing up the game is just generically good for Smite. A lot of other games use that formula where there's like three, four seasons of year and it does well. And if you look at the Smite player base numbers, uh, outside of the fact that the season of hope sucked. And so we lost some players throughout the season of hope because it wasn't any good in general. The numbers are actually still up for the year with the new seasonal format, because I think it's just smarter from an advertising perspective and from a gameplay perspective. Um, Speaking of from an advertising perspective, hi, Rez. I know somebody is listening right now, so I'm going to say my idea that I've said a thousand times. I'm just going to keep it going. Make specific drop campaigns for Smite partners based off of new season arrivals. Season of Souls, first month, you've got a bunch of spooky god things. You've got Haiti god skins that you can get from watching. You've got Persephone drops. You make it themed, it's gonna be super cool. Then the second month drops around and you do themed drops for the new god. You get a new god icon. You get yourself a recolor that you could normally buy with favor anyway. You get the recolor for watching. Hell, maybe you unlock the god if you watch the whole thing. Then the third month, you do the little side stuff. You do a little ward skin and you do a little whatever. Maybe you even drop some hints for the new upcoming season, right? Third season's gonna be the third month's gonna be the last one before the new season. Maybe you drop in a couple of little hints like, ooh, why are these in there? Then bam, you do the new season and you do it all over again. And all of a sudden there's twice as many people watching Smite, which is giving it twice as much exposure. But I digress. Any hoozle, um, a lot of big swings being taken. A lot of big changes coming to the game. Presumably going to have a massive impact on how the game is played. Hopefully, the design leads people to PvP more in PvE less. Or at least PvE around an objective together. You know, like the Stygian uh, and the Soul Surge work like a Gold Fury where people are fighting over it. Like, that is fun. Um, you know, PVPing over a PVP objective is fun. Uh, so hopefully that's where the game is going. Um, and any big changes like this are very scary. But I, from what I've seen, the ideas behind everything in this patch all looked really solid. It all looks like they want less one shots, more PVP less AFK farm PVE. And then the only thing that I'm not sure on is this Titan thing. The Unleashed Titan thing makes me a little bit nervous because it does sound like their intent with this change is to make conquest games shorter. 
And I do think that when conquest ma matches on average are around that like 35 minute marker, I think is when Smite feels the best because you get a solid like 10 minutes of early game, 10 minutes of late game. 15 or 10 minutes middle game 15 minutes late game like when you have like those defined stages of okay you get this amount early and this amount mid and this amount late i feel like that's like when conquest thrives and if these titans come out too early if it's a spawn at 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes then the game snowballs too fast and then it just feels like you've got a 10 minute early game and then you're immediately into the late game and there is no mid game uh so i do worry a little bit about that but if those spawns are 10 minutes or even 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, maybe the Titans don't even fight every game. That could also be interesting. Maybe if a game goes super long, then boom, Titans come to, come in to help the game end. That could also be interesting. Uh, so it's not like in every single game that it's happening. It's only the very long ones that need a little extra oomph to get them going uh, could be um, a good way to go about that as well. But on the whole... I would say that I am cautiously optimistic about the patch. Thank you for supporting the Twitchiest community. If you'd like to see more videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel and always hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Thank you for all your support and have a twitching day, y'all.